Amen, amen. Praise God. Okay, I'm going to share the word with you today. The word of the Lord today is, I titled it, How to Release Your Faith. How to Release Your Faith. It's a very important topic. And I want to grasp, I want you to grasp everything into, into it. See, you, it's something to say that I have faith. But it's another thing to see the works of faith manifest in your life. You know, I said this, faith, faith put into action produces results. Faith put into action produces results. So, I've met many people who talk about faith. But I, I like to see the works of faith manifest in their lives. See, in the Bible, people got healed when they came to Jesus. But every one of them had to take a step of action for them to be healed. In Matthew chapter 9, verse 27 and 29, Rose, if you can read that. Matthew chapter 9, verse 27 and 29. You need to confess your faith with your mouth and act on it. So, it's one thing to say, I have faith. It's nothing to act on the faith that you have. Yes, Rosie. Matthew 9, 27 to 29. As Jesus went on from there, two blind men followed him, calling out, Have mercy on us, son of David. When he had gone indoors, the blind men came to him, and he asked them, do you believe that I am able to do this? Yes, Lord, they replied. Then he touched their eyes and said, according to your faith, let it be done to you. Two blind men came to Jesus. I don't know, they were completely blind, partially blind, but they were blind. They heard Jesus was passing that way. They came to Jesus and they said, Jesus, have mercy on us. They put their faith into action. They didn't sit there and say, let's see if he can heal. I'll just sit there and expect my healing. They took a step of faith and they went to the healer. And at that moment, Jesus turned and said, do you believe that I could heal you? And they said, yes, Lord, we believe. They were healed. In the Bible, you have so many stories. Blind Bartimaeus, the, the woman with the issue of blood. Shout out a few more stories in the Bible. And they put faith into action. Sorry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's his name? The commander who sent his servant to Elijah, Elijah right? He said to Elijah. Yeah, anyway. So the Bible, Bible is full of stories of that, that nature. We read another scripture. Two Corinthians chapter five, verse seven. Two Corinthians chapter five, verse seven. Yeah. yeah. Corinthians 5 verse 7. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7. For we live by faith, not by sight. Amen. So we live by faith, not by sight. Which means the natural, what seems to be impossible with man, is possible with God. So you see something, a hopeless situation. Everyone will say it's useless, it can't happen. But you say yes. 
We live by faith, not by sight. I can't help but share the story of Jeremy, who is here. For those of you who don't know Jeremy, give us a hand, Jeremy. Jeremy, give us a hand. Yeah. That's a tremendous testimony of faith put into action. When I went to Jeremy's in the hospital at the Ponesh ICU, Jeremy was, Jeremy was, as far as the medical profession was concerned, Jeremy was going to pass away tomorrow. They were removing the, uh, what do you call it, the life support today. All the family had come to see him. And at that point I went to the hospital and I saw Jeremy and I thought, he was my best man when I got married 35 years ago. Amen. So I said, Lord, Jeremy can't go. He's too young to die. He will live. And I prayed this prayer totally by faith, putting it into action. Making statements in the natural which seemed foolish, even possibly for his to his wife who was standing there. But in the Lord, it was wisdom. In the, in the, in the realm of the spirit, we are making statements against the state, against Satan. And the devil, you cannot take him. He's coming back to life. So, I would encourage you, when you are in a situation, when you are hopeless, in the natural, look to the Lord and make positive declarations. You walk by faith, not by sight. So, how, how, how does that make statements? When you know something is not, not going to happen, everyone says it's not going to happen, you say it's going to happen. Can someone share a story, some, some story in your life which happened like that? Anyone you know, with a testimony? Yeah. This is something that came to mind. So, I knew in my heart I'd win my first election to council, right? God, I felt like God was telling me I'm going to win. Now, all the odds were against me because I'd never ran before, but I went to the pastor of the church I was attending to at the time and his wife and I said, I want to have a meeting with you, I'm going to win. She goes, oh, everyone thinks they're going to win. But just, just don't be disappointed. Mm -hmm. But I knew in my heart, I said, I don't know, explain it, but I feel like God has placed this peace in my heart. And I did win, but it's like, I just knew in what I knew because after that, there was a lot of work with God done. Thanks. Amen, amen. Praise God, praise God. See, it's so important that you have a right attitude. Because you, not only you see the victory, but people around you enjoy the freedom that you bring to that Pritza. Now, I'm sure Jeremy's family rejoiced when they heard the next day they lived with the light support and Jeremy did not die, but he's still alive. Yeah. And he's going to be alive for a long time. Yeah. Amen, amen. Praise God. Praise God. I love that song. I love you, Lord, and your mercies never fail me. Oh, sing, Pastor. The moment that I wake up, till I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing. Of the goodness of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. We, every day we should have a song to sing to the Lord of His goodness. Isn't God good? Amen. 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 He's so good. Yeah. This song, the first time I heard this song, a 
girl whom I knew in Sri Lanka, I saw for 35 years on a video playing guitar and singing while she was dying of cancer. She worked for the Queen, mind you. Yeah, she worked for the Queen. That reminds me. Please remind me at the end of the, my sermon to do one minute silence for the Queen. Yeah, please remind me there. So, she worked for the Queen, she had cancer, and she passed away a few years later. But she sang this song playing the guitar, and I thought, wow, how awesome is this? Here she's looking at death as a possibility at that time, but she's singing. I praise God for His goodness. His mercy never fails me. Uh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So, I wrote this down. You need to confess your faith with your mouth and act on it. So, just thinking about it is not enough. You have to confess it with your mouth. For example, say you are in, you have debt. You want to pay it off. Tell the Lord, Lord, I'm believing in you and you confess. In Jesus' name, by 2024, I'll be debt free. Put a date and a time. And you got to believe it and see what happened. You'll rejoice because God will fulfill this promise. If you come into covenant with him, he will come into covenant with you. Amen, amen. Praise God. Another scripture, James chapter 1 verse 6. James chapter 1 verse 6. James chapter 1 verse 6 but when you ask you must believe and not doubt because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind James read James chapter 2 verse 17 chapter 2 verse 17 2 verse 17 in the same way, faith by itself, it is not accompanied by action, if not, sorry. In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. Amen, amen. So faith by itself is not accompanied with action, it's dead. See, you have many leaders. I came across a lot of uh, Pharisees and Sadducees in the church of today who proclaim they have faith but there's no results of the action for faith. As a result, the body of Christ does not advance. We all have a mandate to rise up and anyone in the kingdom of God who loves Jesus can make statements of faith and believe in it for the results to come. Amen. Just believing is not good enough. You need to act on what you believe. Write this down. Just believing is not good enough. You need to act on what you believe. Mark chapter 5, verse 24, 34. Mark chapter 5, verse 24, 34. The first point was you need to confess your faith with your mouth and act on it. Second point is just believing is not good enough. You need to act on what you believe. See, this is the, this is the woman with the issue of blood, Mark chapter 5, verse 24, 34. Verse 20, Mark chapter 5, verse 24 to 34. Yes, sir. Okay. So Jesus went with him. 
A large crowd followed and pressed around him. And a woman was there who had been subject for bleeding, to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. Yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately, the bleeding stopped and she fell, fell to her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once, Jesus realized that power that had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding around you, the disciples asked, and yet you can ask who touched me. But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet and trembling with fear, told him the truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. Amen. So the background of this woman, she had the issue of blood for 12 years. Some of you will know. Once a month when a woman has an issue of blood, she goes through a lot of pain and a lot of hardship during that time. This woman had the issue of blood for 12 years. Imagine how weak she would have been. She would have been in a state of total, I would say today's words, suicidal. Because she could go into the temple, synagogue, because she was considered unclean. At that time, there were law was that if you're unclean, you can't come to the synagogue. You have to wait till you finish, and then after some time, then you come in. This woman was for 12 years bleeding. She has gone to every doctor, the Bible says. She has gone to all the physicians. They could find the help. They would heal her. You know something interesting I found out? You know, doctors practice on you. <laughs> They said they call it general practice. <laughs> they practice on it. They said they get <laughs> general practice. Anyway, there's nothing. Um, so, the woman went to all the doctors. All, all of them failed her. She had no hope. Discouraged, weak, not able to associate with the community, unable to go to church or synagogue. She hears Jesus is coming that way. Now, I don't know what state she was in. Possibly she was in a very weak state. But she says, I am going to touch the garment of the Jesus. Because she has heard that he heals. Miracles happen. You know, I am waiting for that day that the Holy Spirit will manifest so strongly amongst all of us that when a shadow falls on people, people will be healed. This woman comes to the crowd, she comes and she sees a massive crowd around Jesus. So she has to break through the crowd. She pushes through the crowd. This is her faith putting it into action. She pushes through the crowd and she gets to Jesus and she touches his garment. Immediately, she is healed. Immediately. Now, all the people around them, around that place, didn't know what has happened. They didn't have a clue what happened. But Jesus knew the virtue of healing has flowed out of him. See, Jesus knows everything which happens. You might confess in a, in a corner of your house where no one can see you. I told you, Last Sunday before last, when I preached, how I prayed to the Lord. I said, Lord, I need any affairs to go to Sri Lanka. I want to go and see my mother. She's quite getting of age. She's 90, 90, 90, 91 now. So I want to go and see her. This will be the last time that I see her. She's a wonderful woman of God. She has prayed my she prayed me to salvation. And I brought this to the Lord. I didn't tell anyone. Did I tell anyone here? Anyone? Did I tell anyone here? No one knew. Not even my, not even my PA knew. But I told the Lord. 
the Lord knows your need when you confess to Him. And I said, Lord, I want to book my tickets by faith. I want to move forward, book the fares, tickets. And I got an email I told you Sunday before last from a lady from Adelaide who I had not spoken to years. I don't spoke to her. She's a Catholic lady, wonderful woman of God. She sends an email and a text message saying, Pastor Hope, you're keeping well. The Lord placed in my heart to sow $5,000 into your account so that you can have a, enjoy a holiday with your family. Now, how does she know that I want to go for a holiday? How does she know that I need $5,000? Amazing. I can give you a lot of love for it. Thank you, Jesus. So, when you confess, say you're in a challenging marriage, or you're having a family problem, you're having problems with your children, you're having a problem in your work, whatever your problem is, have a right heart attitude. Maybe you have a problem in your church. Maybe you have a problem in our church. You never know. But your heart attitude is so important. Have the right heart attitude and confess it faith, saying, Lord, no matter what happens, I know the best will come for your kingdom. I want to serve you with all my life. When you confess, He brings the results. Amen. Now let me tell you a little story. My sermons are with testimonies that I share because it's faith building, you know. I went to Indonesia, I got called to go to Indonesia to preach. So I went to Indonesia and the pastor invited me. He's a very thin person, he's about that size. He's quite large. So <laughs> he told me, come home. So I went to Indonesia and first, first place I preached was at the tennis arena. It was, it was Easter Sunday. There was Easter crusade. And I was, look, I, was, when I was driving the four-wheel drive with this pastor. I saw thousands of people coming with umbrellas. It was raining, coming with umbrellas into the stadium. So in my mind, I'm working it out. There must be a badminton tournament. All these people are going for the tournament. In the stadium, there was some small room where we have this meeting. My goodness, I was amazed. I was shocked. When I walked in, it was a 10,000 seat auditorium, uh, tennis arena. The, all these people are coming for the crusade. Then I saw STF commandos with machine guns around the stadium. So I asked the pastor, why is that? Pastor told me, Pastor Daniel, our, pros, our president, that was President Magawati Sakara Putu was at that time. Then they had another president called Chiti Chiti Bam Bam. <laughs> so, something like that, some, some name I forget. But President Magawati Sakara Putri sent her, sent her personal bodyguards to secure the tennis arena so that no terrorist attacks are no terrorist attacks are brought upon the Christians. Anyway, so I preached there and I was so excited to preach to ten thousand people in Indonesia. Wow. The next day we were going to a place called Sukabumi. So Pastor was going in the car he told me very casually. He tapped my shoulder and he laughed. He's a real joker. He laughed and he said Pastor Daniel, I have some very interesting, exciting news, exciting news for you. I said, what pastor? You know the church I'm going to preach now? You'll be very happy to know, in the last three months, there are three bomb attacks by the Jama Islamia. Oh man, so very encouraging, you know, you're going to preach. And he says, the church has been attacked three times with the bomb, bomb, bombs. Anyway, I, I, because I've been in Saudi Arabia, I just looked at it as God's grace. I was challenged. I said, yes, let's go, let's go. 
So anyway, we went, in, went in the four wheel drive and we stopped at a police training academy. We stopped there. When we stopped, I saw commandos training, they were climbing on strings, going through low barbed wire fences, crawling and all, doing all the uh, training exercises. But then I saw 20, about 20 officers standing in a row, full uniform, on attention. I was wondering, what's this about? So I jeep in and stopped. One guy came up to the jeep. He did that, and he opened the jeep. No, so I got off. When I got off, oh, the commander said something in Indonesian. He said something. They all saluted. So, I thought, I'm sure they must have got this wrong. They were thinking that I'm a commander, come to see them or something. So I did that. And anyway, I didn't ask the pastor, pastor what, 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 what's this about? He said, Pastor Danny, the commander of this army police camp has said, when they bring a man of God to preach in this church, I should press bring to police station and they should give a royal welcome to them. Amazing, eh? Praise God. So then we set out from the police stage, police academy, to the church to preach. So we were in the four-wheel drive. I turned back and I saw a police bus coming behind us. And I asked the pastor, why are they coming? They are coming to give you security. So, <laughs> this was very interesting. When the jeep stopped, police officers got off the bus, all came, all with machine guns, came running uh, and stopped the vehicles, signaled for my four-wheel drive to come in. And then when I finished, when I got off the four-wheel drive, four police commandos, escorted me to the pulpit, into the church. Ah, oh, man, I was thinking, this, how wonderful, how honoring these people are. And then I was preaching, and when I was preaching, suddenly my eyes fell on a lady who was seated in the front row on a wheelchair. She said a stroke and she was crippled on the right side. She couldn't talk, she couldn't walk. And by preaching, in, uh, there were about 600 to 800 people there. Under the anointing, I was moving under such an anointing, I said, Sister, you will walk today. <laughs> then the pastor, it was the lady pastor there, she said, she was you know, very surprised that I made the statement. Because I didn't know how long this woman was crippled. She knew, she knew this woman was paralyzed for a long time. So in her mind, she's thinking, this guy has made the statement. Now I need to interpret it into Indonesian. So she stopped for her thought and I don't know what she said. She said what she said. Everyone clapped. So I went up to the lady. Everyone is watching this now. I went up to the lady and I said, I want to count one to three and you will stand up. So the pastor said what she said in Indonesia, I don't know what she said. But I said one, two, three. And the lady didn't stand up. She was She just said that, stand up, stand up in Jesus' name. Now, doubts are coming in my mind. I said, no, I'm not going to listen to this. I told the pastor, now don't interpret this. 
At one, two, three, you're going to hold her left hand. Uh, she was eating like this. Her left hand, left hand. I'm going to hold her right hand. And at one, two, three, you're going to lift her up from the chair. Man, <laughs> that master was so scared. She was such a shock. She didn't know how to say no. She was wondering. I said, just don't worry, don't, don't interpret this, do it. So we said, one, two, three, and I grabbed and pulled out of the wheelchair. Can I put the photographs, this person, Desa? This photograph is just as she came off the wheelchair. Now still she's not here, she just uh, pulled out. Can I, can I switch these lights off? Can I, if I... Right. So, wow. there she is. Then I said, now we're going to walk. And he said, walk, so this lady walked. Wow. She walked. She walked. We were holding her. She walked. She was very wobbly. Then she went a little faster. One thing I know is Asian people walk very fast. They walk very fast. They are very quick to get things done. So she went like this and then she went to it. Then she started. Then she pulled both her hands off and she started walking. She was completely healed. Yeah. Now when she when she was healed, the whole place erupted into clapping and cheering. And they were, they, people are just amazed, amazingly touched by the Lord. And the Holy Spirit told me, now we have auto call for the police officers who are giving you security. So, <laughs> I told the Lord, Lord, if they all come up and fall on the ground, who should give me security? This place was bombed three times, so this case, they say, they say, so here, the Lord said, I am your security. I said, this auto call is for all the officers who are giving security, giving guard in this place. If you want to give your life to Jesus, come now. Wow. They saw this woman get healed, right? Man, starting from the commander, he took his cap out, put it under his arm. He started walking to the altar. All the soldiers put their machine guns, hung it back, and they walked to the altar. And at the altar, this is how they stood at the altar. Let's pray there. Sure. Wow. So can you see? Yeah. So can you see? They were all standing there. That's the pastor who interpreted. He's, he's the one who invited me. So, all the police officers gave their lives to Jesus. How awesome is that? Amen. Amen. So, yeah, thank you. We can put the light on. And so, see, there, I, I, I put faith into action and saw amazing results. By one woman getting healed, about 30 police officers, police commandos, gave their lives to Jesus. But then the rest of the people, man, there were so many people who were unsaved. Hundreds came to the Lord at that meeting. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God can work only with the measure of faith you have. You have faith for a bicycle, that's what you'll get. But if you have faith for a car, then you'll get a car. See, God can work with your measure of faith that you have. If you have faith for a bicycle, you'll get a bicycle. If you have faith for a car, you'll get a car. So, the measure of faith that we trust the Lord with, we'll see the results come. Amen. Amen. Your seed is your, it's God's measure how, 
how much you release to God by faith. Another way is see is how much you release to, release to God in faith. That's how much you'll be blessed in return. See, Abraham. You pass. You, your faith must pass the test in order for God to answer. Abraham had faith, amazing faith. He took his son to be sacrificed. And his blessing was what? What was his blessing? He's, today, even today, the Jews are a blessed people because of one man's blessing. Abraham. He was blessed because he obeyed God. He put, he had faith. I mean, he, he had tremendous faith to take his son. I, I don't know, I would have done a thing like that, but praise God for Abraham. He obeyed God and he took his son to be sacrificed. He went up the mountain and he was ready to sacrifice his son. When the Lord spoke, said, Abraham, don't. You have been faithful. Your descendants will be like the stars of the sea and the sand seas. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Can we read Romans chapter 1, verse 17? Romans chapter 1, verse 17. Romans 1, 17. For in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last, just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. Amen. So the righteous will live by faith. Do you remember those words? The righteous will live by faith, not by sight, by faith. Amen. God bless you. I want to call on us to the announcements. Amen. Amen. You guys got faith? Yes? <laughs> faith is tested, but we got faith, hey? Okay, welcome everyone to Reformation Harvest Fine Ministries. On behalf of the leadership, uh, Senior Pastor Daniel Nalaya and the other leadership team and service team, you're most welcome. Anyone here for the very first time? Okay, we'll just go and run through the announcements and then we're going to go to the communion. Okay, so every Sunday, 10 o'clock, um, we meet here. Um, please keep inviting your friends and family. And uh, Wednesdays, we do a prayer call. Wednesdays, Fridays, Saturdays are all prayer opportunities. So Wednesdays, we on the phone. We pray for Australia and the nations from 7 to 8. Friday, we meet here 7 to 8 to pray for Australia and the nations as well. And Saturday uh, is a conference call. Patri Sister Patricia leads up from three to four on the phone. So you're welcome to join every or all of any or all of those. Okay. So continue to keep in mind Rescue Sri Lanka and Mission for the Philippines. Uh, those needs um, are continuing. So please see the leadership team to see how you can assist and what goods and funds um, you can keep. Collecting in the tin as well, there's uh, another way to just go straight to the pastors, Pastor Ben about Philippines as well. So there you go. Okay, in Australia, keep that in mind. Australia Day helps unite us. And we're gonna have a very special service on uh, oh, January 26. <laughs> Still a few months away, but let's just keep it to mind because this is crucial. Um, 
We're also going to do a minute silence for the Queen. So um, we'll just get Pastor Daniel back shortly. Uh, and this is an opportunity where it's quite vulnerable. If we can go back to that slide, thanks, in Australia Day. This is quite um, a vulnerable time in Australian history with the Queen passing. Uh, there'll be a push to remove all sorts of things and try to change Australia maybe for the worse as well. So we want to head this year and just remember that we need to celebrate Australia Day because it will continue to unite us. So I'm going to call Pastor Daniel back before um, I continue and we're going to do a minute silence for the Queen. Well, I was watching the news broadcast and I was amazed when I heard Liz Truss, who was the new Prime Minister, read a speech after Queen was Queen passed away. She said, for us is to live is the Lord, for die is the Lord, to die is the Lord, and to continue to live is the Lord also. Yeah. I was amazed to hear that from her Prime Minister making this statement. And then I had a pastor friend from the Scots Presbyterian, Scots Presbyterian Church who told me he had the opportunity of staying with the Queen in uh, uh, Scotland. What's the place? Balmoral, I think, at Palace. And he, he said, Pastor Danny, Queen is thoroughly born again. She's a wonderful woman of God, very God fearing. I can't say that of Charles, of course, but let's pray. Who knows? God will change his life. Shall we stand up and just one minute honoring the Queen? Let's be silent starting from now. They want can you join pray for the royal family. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We'll see out of a carianta. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we know, Lord, that you put um, people in high places, Lord. We know, Lord, that there's nobody anywhere that's there that you haven't allowed it to be. And so, Lord, we just pray right now. We hand over the British royal family to you, Lord. We hand over every position that they hold. We hand over every person that is part of that family. And especially, we hand over King Charles and his family and his two sons and their families. We ask you, Lord, to speak to their hearts. We ask you, Lord, that whatever they're doing, whatever they're thinking, wherever they're going, Lord, that you cause them to be mindful of you. And Lord, we just bless them. We bless them. We ask we have real blessing upon them because these are not easy times. We don't know where their hearts are, but Lord, we bless them. We don't curse them. There are some people that do not think well of them, but we choose to bless, not curse. And so we thank you, Lord. We thank you for every one of them. And we thank you, Lord, what we believe that you are doing in their lives, Lord, because we have committed them to you. And also the Commonwealth, 
the British Commonwealth and those that belong to the Commonwealth of Nations, Lord. I just pray that you'll have your mighty hand upon them, Lord. And Lord, that these, these nations, Lord, because they are part of the Commonwealth, which is based on, on your laws, your statutes, your Ten Commandments, based on you, Lord, we just pray, Lord, that this, this Commonwealth, Lord, will acknowledge you, will come to a place where they acknowledge you just like the uh, Prime Minister did, just like even the royal family that we didn't think was necessarily uh, Christian in a lot of ways. But they've, they've stepped forward and they've acknowledged you. So, Lord, we just pray an acknowledgement of you over all the Commonwealth countries and their leaders, their prime ministers, their presidents, whatever they are, in the mighty name of Jesus, Yeshua, we thank you for them and we just we bestow a blessing upon them in your name. And Lord, we hand them over to you because they're your people, your nations and, and your commonwealth. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Okay, I'm just uh, the slide before. We're just going to have lunch uh, after. So we have lunch today, actually.